Hey, what's cracking? Hope this video finds you doing well. I want to thank you for clicking on the video. If you've never watched one before, my name is Ricky Dye. I went to prison when I was 15 years old in the state of Oklahoma for murder. And I was there for 20 and a half years before I got out. I can't do anything to change my past. I can't go back and change what happened that put me in prison. If I could, of course I would, but we're not allowed to do that. We don't get to go back and hit redo or restart and try again. Life's a little more serious than that. Sometimes we don't realize that just a few seconds in our life can change the rest of our life. Uh, when, we're, when we're young, we do things that don't make sense sometimes, and uh, I'm certainly an example of that. So what I do do is I make these videos in hopes that by sharing my experience, what it was like to go to prison at 15, what you're likely to face if you should go to prison, what it was like to be certified as an adult and sent to prison with grown men when I was 15 years old. If I share those experiences, I'm doing it in hopes that, my friend, you will never have to. That maybe it'll find some kid somewhere who's going down the same road I was going down. And maybe if he listens to a few of my stories, it'll snap him out of it. And uh, I've had a few people tell me that, that, that it's done just that for them. And that's the reason I make the videos. If it's the first time you've watched one, you'll enjoy them best if you'll start at the beginning because I've told them in a, in a series, like a story, um, just the way they happen. I started at 15 with what happened, what led me to the crime that ended up causing me to spend 20 years in prison. How I was certified as an adult, what that's like and what, what that entails. And uh, then I start going prison by prison, what it was like for me and what I experienced at those prisons. And today I'm jumping back into Holdenville. That's where I'm at in my story right now. I talked to you guys a little bit about what I'm going to go into today, the story that I'm going to go into. I set it up a little bit before when I told you that there had just been a racial riot there and a white guy had got killed. And that at first all these white guys sticking together, but there's 96 people to a day room. And these white guys have started to, uh, the UABs have decided there can be only one pretty much. And uh, they're having these other OABs either cover up or join. Most of them are some that are refusing. Uh, then you've got a few Irish mob there. And today we're going to talk about a kid named Sean. Sean came into prison. Sean has a little backstory, you see. Sean right now is doing time in Holdenville at the time that this story takes place. Sean comes in and he's 19 years old. Sean has a charge that he beat. Okay, so when he was going to high school, his girlfriend was one of the youngest people, say, for example, she was one of the youngest people in 11th grade. He's one of the oldest people in 12th grade. On top of that, he flunked a year. So part of the year, Sean is a year older than his girlfriend, and part of the year, he's two years older. It depends on where the birthdays fall. So when he was 18 and his girlfriend... When he turned 18, his girlfriend was 16 for a little while before she turned 17. But by him being 18, having sex with her, and 16, even though they were in the same grade in school, his mother threw a big fit, this girl's mother threw a big fit, and got charges brought on him for rape. Uh, because of their ages. Statutory, statutory rape. He ends up beating it in the long run on the Romeo and Juliet clause. And now is doing time for burglary and drugs. And he hits a yard, and he had been running around with some guys on the street that were Irish mob. And they, he says, he, he, his story was they were going to put him on Irish mob. Well, they don't tell him on the streets that, hey, by joining the Irish mob, if you go to prison, once you get in prison, there's not very many Irish mob. There's a whole bunch of UABs. They're going to want you to cover up your tattoos, maybe beat you up, blah, blah, blah. Maybe they'll offer to let you join. Never, not, never know. It just depends on the temperature of the yard, the guys that are there uh, running it at the time. And he's, he gets there, and he, he don't know all this prison politics. He don't realize the UAB are running everything. He don't realize that this racial riot has just happened and this guy's got killed and that they're making these other guys patch out. And he gets there, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be Irish mob, I'm Irish mob. So he's not yet, but he's supposed to be. He's got some cloverts tattooed on him. All right, so these couple guys, I won't say their name, older guys, supposed to be good convicts, but they're Irish mob. But people like them, and they're not out flaunting their 
uh, colors more or less. They're not out trying to say, hey, I'm Irish Mob, whoop de whoop whoop. So they've been kind of just left alone by these UAB. But they pull this kid up, and they're telling him, okay, well, you say they were going to, we're going to prospect you more or less, this and that. But what's really going on is they know that this kid has money. This kid's got money. He's made it known. He's tried to buy friends. He's got there. He's had his family send money to this guy and send money to that guy, getting in canteens. He's buying drugs, and he's getting his buddies high that he thinks these guys are Irish mob. He wants to hang out with them. and uh, He don't do hard dope, though. He doesn't do coke or crank or anything like that. He only smokes weed. And this dope comes in, some cocaine. And these Irish mob dudes wanted some. Both of them are they're hardcore dope addicts. But Sean, he don't do that. But everyone knows he has money. So these guys talk Sean into going and getting dope for him. First he goes and gets a gram for him. Then he gets another gram. He ends up getting in debt for these guys for like $500. Both of them give him their word. They're going to pay for it. We're all Irish mob. We're going to put you on. But everyone else... To everyone else, these UABs have already said, this dude's a piece of shit. He had a rape charge. So even though he beat that case, it doesn't matter. To them, he had a rape charge. So that's the only reason they're not beating this kid up, running him off the yard right now, is because these uh, guys that are Irish mob have told the UABs, don't run him off the yard. We're, we're working him. He's a cash cow. So that can happen to you sometimes. If you get in prison and you and you got someone that's in prison that you care about and you send them a bunch of money because you love them and you really want to help them out. Or you get on a yard and, and you think, oh, man, this place ain't too bad. If I can get high over here and I can get me some dope right here and I can get some dope from this dude. But people see you going and making those moves and buying that. And the people that deal the drugs, they talk to each other about what who owes what and, and try to make sure that you don't get more debt than you can pay. And uh, this kid has flaunted this money around. And so what happens is he ends up getting in debt for $500 for these guys. And they leave him hanging, and he ends up paying this money. And so they go and they set up a deal to get some dope in. They're going to finance the dope with his money. He's going to get like $1,500 sent to this. People over here, they're going to buy an ounce of this cocaine. It's going to get brought in for a quarter of it. They're going to have three quarters left. They're going to make all his money back, blah, 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 blah. But when it comes down to it, uh, the time for the fifteen hundred dollars to get sent, the kid blanches on it. Sean, he he gets it. I don't know. He has a feeling that he don't know if he wants to do it or not. And now they put pressure on him. These Irish mob dudes do want this shit done, and they're doing it through these UABs. They're the ones charging the quarter to get in. So all these white boys end up high off this fifteen hundred dollars he's sending, but he isn't able to send it. So one reason or another, he doesn't send the money. Whether he was able to or just didn't, I don't know. But they end up beating him down and putting him on PC. Because he didn't send that money. But he didn't owe no one nothing. And he covered that 500 But they beat him up and put him on PC because he didn't get the 1500 cent. And the deal went south. And because of that, the UABs come down on these Irish mob dudes. And uh, I ain't even going to go into that story, what ended up happening. Because I don't want to try to mess up no one else's life. But uh, I tell that as a precautionary tale because... You don't go into prison slinging around money. If your family's in there, you don't just sling them a bunch of money because they can become a cash cow. And if you become a cash cow, people will say, hey, we're going to keep him around for a while. We won't run him off. We're going to keep him here for a little while and use him for, for money. You know what I'm saying? Have him send money here and there, and he'll be all right as long as he keeps sending. And uh, that makes me think today I sit out here and it's warm out here. It's, it's kind of warm today, and man, I'm so freaking glad I ain't sitting in one of them cells somewhere, man. It's damn near 90 degrees here today, and I guarantee you sitting in one of them cells, it's all bad, man. I remember we used to go and uh, fill up my ice chest at the ice machine. You'd get this little ice bucket. It looked like a, a minnow bucket is what it is. Go down there and fill your little minnow bucket up with ice chest and fill it up, fill our sink up with it. And then set your fan behind your sink where that fan will blow across that ice, and it will cool your cell almost like an air conditioner. So it is amazing the things people would do. Uh, to survive and you know when I first got out of prison today I got all frustrated over my car you know something's wrong with it I've come up with the money fix that and something else wrong with it and that cost this and that cost that and especially I'm bad about my nerves letting my nerves get bad if I'm having any kind of money issues or something's coming up I may already know how I'm going to take care of it but you still worry about it you worry about your electric you worry about your rent you think this is going to happen, that's going to happen. What, what, what really is going to happen? 
what, what's going to happen if you don't pay it? You're going to turn it off? No one's going to come up in your yard and try to knife fight you over it. You know what I'm saying? What do you really need to survive? What do you really need? Really, I need the air to breathe. I can't be too hot or too cold, which I'm okay. You need some kind of clothes on your back, but it, it's not hard to find something to put on. You can go to a thrift store or Goodwill and get some clothes. Uh, and you need something to eat and drink. Really, that's all you need. But I wager if you're watching this video, you got a lot more than that. So I hope that today you choose to pick up your blessings. Think about all the things in your life you got going your way. The people that you love. Things that you have in your life that make you happy. Think about those things. Don't think about things that are against you. You know what I'm saying? Don't piss on that shit, man. If you can't control it, who cares? If you can control it, try to make it better. If you can't control it, don't dwell on it. Don't dwell on tomorrow until it gets there because you're not guaranteed anything. Not even guaranteed today. So uh, this is a short video. But uh, I have a couple longer ones coming up. I'm going to do one about Danny Parker very soon. Uh, Danny Parker was a frightening man. And uh, I'm going to tell a story about him. And it's going to be part of my Oklahoma prison legends. Also, I haven't done a live in a while. So, Sunday night, 7 o'clock, my time, central time, I believe it is. Uh, I will be doing a live, 7 o'clock Sunday evening. So you guys be there, join in. I don't know what we're going to talk about. Just haven't talked to you guys in a while. So we're going to get together and we're going to kick it and talk about it. And uh, uh, during that live, maybe I'll tell you what happened between Richard and Philip, the one that keeps asking me that stuff. I want to give a shout out to uh, Brandon Bonds. If you haven't checked out his channel, check it out. The link's in the description. Same with John Doe. His link is in the description if you haven't checked out his channel. If you need any plumbing done down there in Ida Bell, you can hit John Doe up, Straight Flush Plumbing. If you need any pest control in Oklahoma, DOA pest control, dead on arrival. If you need any construction of any kind done, man, I'm telling you, holler at Mid-America Construction. Holler at Ben Seaborn. You'd be the most honest person you've ever dealt with. You get a good job at a good price. And uh, with that, uh, I want to give a shout out to the riders and dyers. Riders who ride till the wheels fall off and the dyers keep riding even when they do. Love you guys. And... Uh, I thank y'all, everyone who's took time to watch the video. If you haven't subscribed so far, what are you waiting on? Hit that for me, man. May God bless, keep, and protect each and every one of you. Till I see you again. Peace out.